Sundays are about like hearing and helping you hear what somebody is talking. The purpose of hearing aids is to help turn up the volume for people that need it. So um, after we've uh, identified a type of hearing loss or degree of hearing loss, what we then do is take hearing aids and um, set them according to what that hearing loss requires. So our goal is to really make speech um, audible and therefore improve communication. Tell them what they like. They like, I can hear everything. What we're doing um, when we're testing hearing is we're testing different pitches um, at different volume levels and we're trying to see how softly the child responds to the sounds. Um, with the babies what we usually do, it's, it's a pretty easy task. What we're doing is taking advantage of what people naturally do when they hear a sound, they turn toward it. And whenever the child hears the sound, they turn toward it. Um, and then an animal or a toy is lit up to encourage them to do that again. As the child gets a little bit older, then we can make it into a game task. So every time they hear the sound, um, they're taught to uh, respond to the sound by throwing a ball in a bucket or putting a peg in the board. And as they get even older, then we transition them to more of an adult type testing where they press the button when they hear the sound or they raise their hand, something like that. Um, I first started thinking that Jessie had a hearing impairment when um, when she was probably just a few months old. But she has an older sister and I was watching kids at the house and all the other kids would react when the dog started barking or there was a knock at the door and, and Jessie would just go on playing. When she was a toddler she was speaking very loud um, and she would actually have people turn their heads toward her in order to be able to do conversations. Um, and I just noticed that she, even at a very young age, started to read lips. Well, you know, around the age of you know, two to three, you know, you're starting to learn how to speak. And when we were learning new words, he was very intent on watching our lips. And I didn't know if it was just from learning new words and we were enunciating really well, or if it was because he was having trouble hearing us. So um, we also heard the word what a lot. And so that led us to believe that he may be losing his hearing. He had his hearing when he was born. He passed all the hearing tests, and this particular situation is a um, genetic inheritance. And it usually happens between the ages of two and four is when you start to see the hearing loss, and that's exactly what happened. We go over the results with the parents the day of the test, and um, it's important for us to identify if the hearing loss appears to be temporary or permanent. Um, if the hearing loss is permanent, our goal is to figure out exactly what the degree of hearing loss is and try to explain to the parent the effect that it could have on their child's life. Um, once we get into any significant degrees of hearing loss, uh, about a mild degree or greater, then it tends to be a recommendation that we, we would recommend hearing aids. It was night and day. Um, I still remember the very first day that he went back to school with the hearing aids and I got a phone call just a couple hours after he'd been there and the teacher said, you know, of course I asked them, what, you know, oh no, what's wrong? What's going on? And they said, nothing's wrong. They're like, we just want to tell you how much fun we're having watching your child experience a whole new world. Once a child has gotten medical clearance for hearing aids, uh, what we do is we bring them in for uh, what we call a hearing aid evaluation appointment. And at that appointment, what we're doing is basically reviewing the, the hearing loss with the family, making sure they understand um, all the implications of having a hearing loss. So how does it affect them educationally and socially? And then what we do is we talk to them about how hearing aids can help with that. So um, we can demonstrate for them how a hearing loss would sound so they can get a better understanding. And then we start to move into the specifics about hearing aids. This is the ear mold. It is the custom made product that attaches the hearing aid to the child's ear. When we're talking about the different color choices, what we like to do is help the child figure out their favorite color or something that would make them feel comfortable about using this every day. So um, we have several samples um, that we tend to show the families. Um, we have the different behind the ear hearing instruments that can come in different casing colors. So um, they can also get stickers to put on the outside. So for example, here's a red one. Um, if I were to choose one, I would pick the purple. <laughs> and then we have blue. Somebody could get soccer ball stickers or something to put on there. So um, sometimes people will even get different colors for each ear. Whatever they want to do, if, if the parents are comfortable with it, we let them go with that. Um, the other part that we need to uh, make custom for each child is their ear mold. So the, the hearing aid actually goes behind the ear 
for most children. And then we have an ear mold that go, is custom made for the child's um, ear inside. And we can make these a number of colors too. So, and designs as well. So for instance, this one is a, a clear design with one color running through it. We can also get glitter or stripes or polka dots, something like that. And again, sometimes they'll choose different colors for either side. I have just, you know, kind of the skin type of color. Purple, pink, green, and yellow. Uh, red, white, and gray. We have. I got rainbow, mm -hmm. and I got red, and blue. And why did we pick that? Because it's a fan of Superman and Spider-Man. Yeah. The behind the ear hearing aid is most appropriate for infants and young children because the hearing aid device stays the same as your child grows. What would be changed would be the ear mold, the custom made ear mold, which we would replace as your child grows. Um, what would you tell someone like if they were just getting ready to get their hearing aids for the first time? Um, like if if someone asks you, you should just explain. You won't. Don't be afraid to tell them. Um, you'll be fine. Probably keep a battery pack on you all the time because batteries might run out. We just started deciding, you know what, a single, there's one day every week. Or right now we're on Wednesdays. No matter what, even if we think the batteries are still good on Wednesday morning, they get changed. Uh, that way she doesn't come to us on Wednesday afternoon and say, hey, these aren't working. Some, some advice I would give is to, uh, first of all, get as much information as they can. Um, try to build a great relationship, something that really helps me out. I've had the same audiologist the whole time. Um, try to get someone that you can confide in and ask questions um, and also understand that it is not uh, it's not the end of the world it is um, a perceived disability that they can live with and actually prosper from there are many times that we forget um, until someone asks Kyle or Caleb what is that in their ear that we even forget that they wear them I mean I'm sure they do they remember but I actually forget so advice is to just understand that it's something that can be dealt with and it can um, actually enhance their life once they learn how to work with it. Be proactive and um, go and see someone and make sure that you know when you come with questions and here at Children's they answer every single question that you have no matter how big or small and um, you know, don't be scared at all. There's so much help out there now and the technology is incredible and there's definitely a way that you can bring uh, the magic of sound to your child's life.